Um, uh, first of all, I'm sure the person who asked the question, like all of us, is very encouraged by the news that we got today, um, the preliminary results that have been released from the clinical trial of the AstraZeneca vaccine, following on the encouraging results from the two earlier vaccines, the Pfizer and the Moderna, both of which are mRNA vaccines, the AstraZeneca vaccine being a viral vector vaccine. So I think the good news is that vaccines for COVID-19 disease is possible to make, and it's possible that we will have a number of different vaccine candidates that can be used in the fight against this disease. And as we are discussing the ACT Accelerator today, I think this is very relevant because we would like to, to provide access to as many efficacious and safe vaccines as possible so we can cover the population around the world. Remember, we have to cover a huge number of people, billions and billions of people. This is unprecedented. And we will need all the manufacturing capacity in the world to be able to do that. Now, on the AstraZeneca results itself, we've heard only the preliminary results um, about the vaccine trials that were done in the UK and Brazil. Um, looking at two slightly different do dosing schedules, um, and, and the schedule that, that had the two doses of the same, uh, the same dose given two times had a slightly lower efficacy, but, but still it was about 62%, which is above the, the benchmark that we had set. Um, but the, the schedule which gave uh, a smaller dose followed by a larger dose, actually the efficacy seems to have been higher up to 90%. But again, this is based on rather small numbers and I think we need to wait to see the results, both of the efficacy and the safety. The AstraZeneca vaccine is also being currently trialed in many other countries. And eventually, we should have data on about 60,000 patients or so that will enable us really to have a much more informed decision. So we await discussions with the company, and, uh, and they're already talking with our pre-qualification program uh, on, um, on how they would go about uh, and, and Dr. Simao is uh, available to answer more questions on that. Thanks. Thank you, Dr. Swaminathan. And over to Dr. Simao for some added points. Thank you very much, Margaret. And thank you, Corinne, for the question. Actually, we, we have had already several discussions with the AstraZeneca on the, uh, following the expression of interest that WHO issued for the emergency use listing and pre-qualification of the vaccines. So we are very hopeful and we are about to receive more data that includes uh, clinical data in the next week. And we, uh, we, uh, we are also aware that AstraZeneca has, is also submitting the dossiers to the European Medicines Agency, and we do have a very close collaboration. There are actually eight sites, that, uh, and some of them are manufacturing sites. So we will be analyzing this data with, uh, very carefully, uh, but very much welcome the results so far. We expect that we should have uh, 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 f f finalized uh, the assessments in the beginning of next year. Thank you. If I could just add, Margaret, I forgot to mention the advantage of this vaccine is that it can be stored in the ordinary refrigerated temperatures of, of two to eight degrees and is stable at that temperature. And that, of course, has huge logistical advantages for transporting and delivering this vaccine to cities and towns and villages uh, and rural areas around the world. And we hope there will be more vaccines like that, which are more heat stable and uh, and we have to uh, also uh, continue to encourage all the other developers who are doing clinical trials and who are in early phases of, of development, because we do need a variety of vaccines out there that will target different groups better, that will have different uh, storage conditions. And also uh, the issue of affordability is, is also important to keep in mind. 